Hey guys, Mike Masek here, part of Nielsen Enterprises, and today we're going to talk about the Sea-Doo Switch. There's been a lot of buzz of these things going around the internet lately, a lot of factory videos, a few dealer videos, but not a whole lot of information. So we're going to jump in and I'm going to tell you my experience uh, with the Sea-Doo Switch. Had the opportunity to drive one this week and uh, I liked it. I'm going to tell you what I think about it. Uh, as far as my background goes, I'm personally already a Sea-Doo owner. I've owned a 230 and a 300RXTX. Um, been on the, the waterway for a long time, do a lot of boating here on Channel Lakes, do some Lake Michigan boating. I'm not new to being on boats or being on the water. So uh, here's some information. If you got questions, just give a comment below. The Switch basically comes in three different sizes and three different models. You've got the base, you've got the Sport, and you've got the Cruise. As far as sizes go, you've got the Compact, you've got the 18, and the 21. Keep in mind those 18 and 21 foot, that does include the length of the swim platform on the back, so that is accounted for in the length of overall length of that boat. Let's talk about construction. So people are asking, what is the hull made of? What are the tunes made of? Let's start by saying, no matter what one you buy, all of the switch models, all of the lines, all of the sizes are tri-tune. So it's got the three tunes. The center tune actually sits down into the water a little further than the outside tunes, which is gonna give it that, that cornering ability and we're gonna get into handling a little bit later. Construction of the tunes is made from a material called Polytech. You may already be familiar with that from some of the other PwC lineups that CDU has on the market. It's scratch resistant, uh, it's very durable, and my understanding is the tunes are also, also built in sections. So for whatever reason, you would damage a section of the tune. You do not have to replace the whole thing. You can replace them in sections. Now, the way this boat is constructed, constructed is uh, the fit finish, I was, I was impressed. Uh, if you're gonna compare this boat to a Bennington or a high-end luxury pontoon boat, this probably isn't the boat for you. But hold on, because maybe we can change your mind with some of the benefits this boat has. The way you sit in it, the way it handles, it's very unique. This is, there's nothing really like it on the market. People are, are looking at it thinking, I just don't know if I can get over the handlebars. Let me tell you, once you drive the boat, you'll understand why it has handlebars, because this boat actually handles much like a, a, a PwC would versus a pontoon. And, and the handling of it and the control of it with leaving your hands both on the handlebars and the forward and the reverse, you can really dock this thing and maneuver it and pivot it anywhere you want to go with ease. Unlike a standard pontoon boat, this boat is going to be awesome for new people to the water, those who are not familiar with maybe docking a larger pontoon or something like that. The controls and the handling of this switch with the handlebars is really impressive. The other thing I should notice mention is you do not have to hold the throttle to continue accelerating or to continue uh, holding your maintaining your speed. There is a con cruise control. Now the boats that we drove the other day did not have them. They were prototype boats, but we are told that the production model, it will have a cruise control. Now, unlike the cruise control or the cruise assist that is found on the PwC side of sea uh, where you still had to hold it full throttle, this will differ and you'll be able to let go of the throttle uh, and you know steer one-handed or be a little more relaxed situation. Let's talk about handling. So we got on this boat and someone from sea took us out to the middle of the lake, showed us the, 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 the operation and the handling of the boat before we got to get behind the helm. Now, I will tell you, the captain says, hold on, we're gonna make a turn. Now myself, I just grabbed one hand on the side of the rail and said, okay, I'm holding on. We were doing about 35 miles an hour and he cracked the handlebars as hard as he could, one direction. And let me tell you what, if the boat didn't spin on its own axis, it was pretty darn close. It was incredible. It almost reminded me of those, those old Sea-Doo Sportsters and jet boats, the way you could just toss them around. That center pontoon being lower, the two outsides ones being a little higher, it just handled it, it was amazing. So the do that on a normal standard pontoon, aluminum tunes, outboard motor, you're, it's never gonna handle like this This switch did. I was thoroughly impressed. Uh, a couple of the other questions I'm seeing is, how was it in the rough chop? To be fair, the lake we were on was not very rough. We created some waves, we hit them with our own. Obviously, 
the 13 foot up to the you know 21 foot they do handle it differently uh, I will say I was very impressed uh, with the way it handled it and I would say it for equivalent size boats if you were to pair pair up the the 18 foot to an 18 foot I, I would say it handled the waves appropriately to a standard 18 foot even bow rider um, so handling and handling the waves uh, I think is I give it a two thumbs up for that I think you're going to see a lot of these on the chain of lakes so let's talk about the inside. You sit at the helm. If you own a PWC or you own a Sea-Doo, those handlebars are identical to the newer model style handlebars. You've got your throttle on the right, you've got your reverse on the left. Your reverse is also your brakes. Yes, the pontoon boat has brakes. You can be going up to speed, grab the brakes, that boat will stop faster than you'd think. So you've got your gauge right up front. Uh, standard gauge gives you your speed. You've got a couple of different modes depending on the model boat you purchase. You've got a sport mode, eco mode, and even a ski mode. So if you set a ski mode, you can set different parameters to wrap up, ramp up the speed of the boat um, at a specific rate. So you're not ripping the uh, the handle out of your tube or out of your skier or your tuber or whatever the case. Again, those are different model specific ideas, um, options I should say. All of the seating in the boat, even the flooring is customizable. Imagine it like Legos. You can unclick the seat, you can move it wherever you want. Uh, there's seating up front. Um, the difference between the Sport and the Cruise, the Sport has kind of some of these more lounge chair style seats up front where the seat, where the Cruise has more of a traditional bench style seat like you'd see in a standard pontoon. Uh, again, all that stuff is interchangeable. You can literally take the seats out and interchange them within minutes. Uh, you can add padded flooring. It's literally like having a Lego set when you're a kid. You'd have that little green uh, building block of a foundation, and you built your house on it. Imagine your switch like that, and you, you're the the floor of your boat is your Legos, and anywhere there's these little slots in the floor, you can put something. You can move the seats arrangements however you want, and the, the beauty of it too is once the seats are on the floor. Um, they become storage and they interconnect. So it's not just one seat is one storage compartment. If you've got four seats next to each other, all four of those interconnect underneath the seat so you can put all your all your belongings in there. Truly, truly customizable. If you wanna go day fishing versus uh, maybe it's a water sports day, maybe it's a picnic day, you could really customize that thing. Maybe it's just you and your wife. You only want two seats and you wanna have more of an open deck. Whatever, whatever your options are that day, you can make it fit your needs. And it's, it's very cool, it's very sporty. Uh, again, it's, it's not luxury, it's very sporty, very unique, very different, very cool. Outside panels, we're getting questions, are what are those made of? They're a very, very heavy duty plastic, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dare use the word film. It's not a hard, rigid material. Couple reasons for this. One is, um, it allows for a little bit of flex in there. Uh, very durable. It's designed from a material that the sun will not fade, will not deteriorate. Um, so it's, you've got you've got a great great foundation there. It's also designed so over time, if it were to stretch or if it if it gets out, you can it can be replaced. Um, it's also adjustable. So uh, at, you know, ten years from now, uh, versus it just being stretched out, flapping in the wind, you can tighten it up. So Cedar's really thought ahead with that. So it touched a little bit on storage uh, with the seats, you know, depending on how your seats are arranged. But there is storage underneath in the floor. Uh, it holds your stern light. So yes, it does have navigation and stern lights. And there is some storage in the floor. Uh, the motor is about center, uh, towards the rear in the center of the boat. Um, very quiet. I was truly impressed. You almost, when you're driving it, there's very little there's very little noise in comparison to what you would expect. There's a lot of sound dampening. When you open that hatch, it's impressive how loud the motor is that you don't hear when the, when the top is on. So um, the interior of the boat is, I don't wanna say utilitarian because it's not, it's much nicer than that, um, but it's, it's very unique, it's very different, very customizable, very sporty. The, this, the driver's seat does bolster up so you can sit up on that. The Bimini top, uh, there are three different models. There's even a camper top. One of the tops is more of just a sunshade. It's designed for about five miles an hour. The more traditional Bimini top uh, can tip forward and kind of just stay up like an arch of a, on the boat. And you can store you can store life jackets and towels up in it. Uh, but it allows for one a couple of things. You can be in the sun if you want to be in the sun. 
Uh, otherwise, you can tip it all the way back. You can. There's, it's it's very customizable as far as how you want the mini top to work. And they also have a camper top that I guess I would call it. It's basically like a whole screened-in area uh, if you want to be on the lake and and keep the bugs out. So lots of customizing with the top. Um, so there's, there's there's tons of options. So which brings me to accessories. Uh, if you get the boat that has a swim platform on the back, there's uh, I believe it's a minimum of two link system mounts. What you'll find on their Sea Dew lineup as well on the PWC side. There's literally over a hundred different accessories uh, for these boats. There are your fuel caddies, storage containers. There is this audio system. Granted, this now that's not link. That's a, a, a accessory that mounts to the floor. It's an audio system with subwoofers, all Bluetooth uh, capable uh, audio, uh, all controlled up at the dash. Um, there are countless, countless accessories for this. There's specific spots for your anchor. BRP really thought ahead with this, and it, again, it's it's like those putting putting the Legos all together to what fits your needs may not be your neighbor's needs, but you could buy the same boat and customize it exactly how you want to how you want to customize it. There are three different motors you can get in this boat depending what what line you purchase. There's the 100, there's the 170, and the 230. Now, big question we're getting is. What is the top speed of this thing? So the top speed is gonna range greatly on what boat it is, what motor you have, and how many people are on your boat. But 26 to 44 miles an hour is the range that we are seeing. Now 44 miles an hour is certainly gonna be with the 230, and it's likely gonna be with minimal people on the boat. So that's, I don't wanna say not obtainable, but that's definitely the perfect world situation. We were on a 21 foot boat and we saw about 35 miles per hour, and I believe we had four or five of us on the boat. That's real world situation, mid 30s with that motor. Um, so, felt great, handling was incredible, driving it with the handlebars felt natural on there. Now again, maybe it felt natural to me, I'm very familiar with driving that PWC with the handlebars and the IBR, the Intelligent Braking Reverse System, and the throttle, um, but it felt very natural, and the boat handles so well, that you, the way you can actually maneuver it, you wouldn't want to maneuver it with a steering wheel because it just it just wouldn't feel natural with the way this boat actually is. So the other thing we should talk about is trailering and the weight. These do come with trailers, they are included. The larger boat does come even with brakes on the trailers. And the other thing I should mention is the, the, tow, the tow weight on these things is just over about 3,100 pounds. So a small SUV can even tow the larger boat. So they're not incredibly heavy. Uh, I think they'll tow very nicely. And even coming with brakes, because anything over 3,000 pounds, in Illinois anyway, does require brakes. So they've thought ahead there, comes with everything. Uh, the trailers look very nicely constructed. So again, I think overall, BRP really hit a home run with these. I think they're gonna be great on the chain. Uh, I did get the opportunity to drive the the, the small one, the 13-footer. Uh, most people, ah, oh, it's really small. It's fun. Uh, you can really throw it around. Uh, it's a ton of fun to drive these things. If you get the opportunity, I would highly recommend it. At least stop in, check them out. Uh, if you've got questions, comment below. In this video, I've got some spec sheets as well. I'll scan them in at the end of the video so you can you can see different specs about about each each boat and what the options are and what they're equipped with. Um, but again, smash the like button. If you, don't like the, if you didn't like this video for whatever reason, hit the like button twice. And uh, as always, we'll see you on the water.